listening to the Sermon Audio Podcast from Redeemer Lutheran Church and Pastor Paul Pett. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. The text for our message is just a portion of our long gospel reading. And uh, all I want you to focus on is the question, why? What evil has he done? Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill our souls. Help us to contemplate Pilate's question. Help us to contemplate and come up with the answers. But help us to come to the right answers. That we might believe and be strengthened in faith and recognize your mercy, your grace, and your love in everything that Jesus did and everything he endured on our behalf. In his name, amen. Is this probably one of the first difficult questions you get when you have little children? Why? And uh, How many of you, when you have little children, ask why, are irritated by that question? Okay? Yeah, because they don't settle for the first answer. Say, well, just because. Why? Well, that's just the way it is. Why? And so I want you to really think about what Pilate's asking. Because does he care? I want you to dwell and answer that question. Does he care? Not really. Not really, not at all. But for this reason, everything is so politically charged, he's looking over his shoulder, watching his back the whole time. Because if you were to describe Pilate using one word, what would it be? Say that again. Coward. I want to put it slightly different, but on the same thing. Afraid. Would you agree? Just think about what Pilate is facing. How many different voices does he have in his ears? Right? So is he standing there on the judgment seat or standing there on that pavement and this massive crowd behind, uh, in front of him, they're all shouting, they're all screaming, and they're calling for Jesus to be crucified. We hear that. But who else is in his ear? His wife. We're going to come back to that later. Not only is his wife is in his ear, but who else is in his ear? Maybe not immediately, but from a distance. Caesar is also in his ear. So now you've got a crowd. Now you've got his wife. Now you've got Caesar. Anybody else in his ear? Chief priests? Ruling council? Anybody else in his ear? Jesus. And as all of these people are in his ear, fear is tearing him to shreds. I want you to look at the picture from, this is from Passion of the Christ. So on one side you have Jesus, on the other side you have Barabbas. Pilate's been given a choice. Pilate's saying, which one do you want me to release? Should be easy, right? A guy who's on trial for insurrection and murder versus a guy who's innocent. Should be easy choice, right? But lest we get the idea that this is all being driven by the devil, Let's rethink that. Because what I want you to think, what God wants you to think, is the reality behind all this. 
So why? Why are the chief priests being so vehement? Why are the chief priests stirring up the crowd? Why are the chief priests wanting to see Jesus die? Why do they want him gone, really? Of? Exactly. Go to the first verse, if you would. Yeah, the first verse I got in there, thanks. This is shortly after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, what are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. So what are they really afraid of? What are they afraid of? Not losing, not the Romans, they're afraid of losing what? Their power, their influence, their control. They're afraid of losing power, influence, and control. Does this sound at all familiar to you? And if you don't think it sounds familiar, you must not watch any news at all. They want power, they want control, just like governments do today all over the world. This is why China tries to get rid of the church. This is why North Korea tries to get rid of the church. This is why the Russia of old tried to get rid of the church. And oh, by the way, this is why the church is under attack right here in this nation. We don't want to fight God for control of people. We want the control all to ourselves. Things never change. Verse 49, But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you, read it with me, that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this as of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also the gather into one, the children of God, who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. Does that fully answer the question why? Does it? It shows their fear. But it also doesn't get to the real heart of the issue. Because who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? God. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. As a matter of fact, this comes up in the trial, doesn't it? We go on to the next passage, if you would, Ben, and listen what happens here in chapter 19. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. And when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. But the Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because... When Pilate heard this statement, he was... Pilate was weak because of fear. Do we make bad decisions because of fear? Think, estimate, in the past five years, how many bad decisions did you make because of fear? I'll tell you one, following the governor's order to close the door of this church was the worst decision I've ever made in my life out of fear. 
Anytime we allow fear to move us to a decision, most of the time it's going to be wrong. We can't allow fear to control us. Pilate allowed fear to control him. The Pharisees, the ruling council, the chief priests are allowing fear to control them. Everyone's using fear to allow it to control them with one exception, and that one exception is Jesus. So did we answer the question why? Did we? Sure we did. Because they were afraid. They were afraid of Jesus. They were afraid of losing their power and influence. They were afraid. But what about the second question? What evil has he done? Did Pilate recognize what the truth was on that? Go back one slide. Read verse 4 again. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I... Jesus was innocent. Completely, entirely, perfectly innocent. Pure, holy, and righteous in every way, shape, or form. Because he needed to be. He needed to be for you and for me. He needed to be for our salvation. That was the only way. A perfect man. The Son of God. Could be the only sacrifice that would save us from our sin and redeem us and bring us back. But for us, we identify with only one person in this whole passage of scripture. Do you know who that is? It's not Pilate. It's not the chief priests. It's not Jesus. With whom should we identify, really? Who did they ask for instead of Jesus? Why should we identify with Barabbas? We deserve to die. Exactly right. We are guilty. Absolutely, completely guilty. Guilty of sin. Whether it's little sins or big sins, either way, a sin is a sin in God's eyes, and a sin deserves death. And that is the fact for all of us. But who was set free? Barabbas. Who is set free? We are. We are set free because Jesus came here. And it's so important before we start laying blame. So if I were to ask you, whose fault was it that Jesus died? You mean not Pilate's because he was weak and afraid? You mean not the chief priests who called for his death? You mean not all the people who are afraid? Whose fault was it? But why did Jesus die? Why did Jesus die? Remember, he's the Son of God. Remember, he's got all the power and authority at his disposal. Why did Jesus die? He chose to. And that's what we have to see through this whole part of Scripture. What we have to see is that Jesus, being innocent, chose to die for us. If you were to say, whose fault was it that Jesus died? You can say ours, but really it was Jesus. He chose to. He chose to endure this. He chose to face this. He chose to suffer this. He chose to out of his love. He chose to out of his mercy. He chose to out of grace to bring us forgiveness and to give us life. He chose to do all of that.
Only He could make that choice. Only He could set us free. Only He could give that gift. And it's so important that we recognize it. We don't look at Pilate. We don't look at the chief priests. We don't even look at ourselves. We look to Jesus and recognize what He gave. Recognize what He did. Recognize what He offered. Because if, indeed, he made this choice, for whom did he make this choice? Now you can say, he made this choice for us. And if he made this choice for us, are we guilty any longer? 1 John says, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses me from which sins? Are you guilty any longer? If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are no longer guilty because he made the choice. He chose to take your place. He chose to set you free. And that is our hope, our peace, and our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.